The reason why this is important is because you see that completing the square formula a into x plus h squared plus k. And remind me, what is h again? Anybody? B over 2a. B over 2a. And k is what? Is that it? Is that k? Yes, sir. All right. So the thing is, this is super important. I've seen it come many, many times in CSEC. And the thing is that once you know these formulas, the question itself is a real easy question. And I see real people bust their brains over these questions. But if they had just known these two formulas, they would have been able to do the question in a minute. Yeah, so knowing these formulas, these formulas are not going to be in your formula sheet. So knowing them is important, right? So for each of the following quadratic equations, determine, is it a maximum or a minimum? So I could see here, these first two are minimum because this is a, a positive. A is positive here, so this is another minimum. A is negative here, so this one is a maximum, all right? Um, Find the turning point, state the line of symmetry, find the roots, find the y-intercept, sketch the graph. Well, okay, let's start with x squared plus 3x minus 10, right? And I'm just leaving that up in the corner there. So we're starting with x squared plus 3x minus 10. Now, when you see a quadratic, you'll definitely want to... Um, You'll definitely want to, to, to factorize and such, right? Are there any numbers that when you add them, you'll get 3, but when you multiply them, you'll get 10? Nobody care. Nobody have any idea. Well, yes, there are. And this, this here can be factorized. So you could definitely factorize it. But I'm not going to factorize it, right? I'm just going to use these formulas. I'm going to put it in this form one time, right? because um, from this form, I could get everything I want, right? So, um, so H, the first thing I'm gonna do is find H. H is B, which is three, all over two A, which is one. So H is three on two, right? And then K is going to be four times A, which is one, times C, which is negative 10, Notice the signs, minus b, which is 3 squared, okay, all over 4a, which is 1. Okay. So k is going to end up being uh, 4 times 10 is negative 40, minus 3, 3 is a 9, so minus 9, all over 4 right so that is negative 49 all over 4 and what is negative 49 over 4 49 over 4 is 12 and a quarter so that's 12 and a quarter 12 and a quarter okay so we can see here that now we have this of the form this here of the form a into x plus h squared plus k. And if I'm making any mistakes, please let me know. Alright, uh, I don't think I made any mistakes so far. Alright, so I have a which is 1 into x plus h, which is 3 on 2, plus k, which is negative 12 and a quarter. So therefore, <laughs> therefore in the form of completing the square, this is x plus 3 on 2 minus 12 and a quarter. And what do we know? We know that the turning point is what? How do we find the turning point? 
So you see, we spent all the hard work doing this, putting it in this form. And now is the easy stuff, just getting the answer. So negative H is negative, and H is three on two. And then K is negative 12 and a quarter, yeah? So negative HK is the turning point. Um, what do we need? We need the roots, right? So we could find the roots in two ways. We could just factorize or we could use this. And let's use this complete in the square formula, right? To find the roots. So x plus three on two, or oh, this is supposed to be squared by the way, squared minus 12 and a quarter is equal to zero. So x plus three on two, squared is equal to 12 and a quarter so therefore x plus 3 on 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 12 and a quarter 3 sorry x plus 3 on 2 is equal to plus or minus 3 and a half right so now x is equal to negative 3 on 2 plus 3 and a half because I threw over the 3 on 2 or x is um, negative 3 on 2 because I threw over the 3 on 2 minus 3 and a half. Ah, so this one here, x is 2 and I have a feeling this one going to be x is negative 3. Okay? So three, no, wait, no, that is not, that is not good. This one here is X is going to be negative five. Yeah, right? Now we could have factorized this, eh? right? If we looked at it, the original equation was X squared plus three X minus 10. Two numbers that will add up to get three and multiply to get 10 is obviously five and two, yeah? negative 5 plus 2 oh no sorry it'll be it'll be positive 5 and negative 2 when you factorize it so when we factorize it it'll be x um plus 5 and then over here it'll be x minus 2 that's when we factorize it yeah uh sorry x equals minus no, it'll be negative because this is a minus and a minus, eh? No, the other one. So you have two. Over here? Yeah. No, three and a half minus one and a half. This is tr positive three and a half minus one and a half. Do you understand? Yeah. So that'll give me two, eh? Right, now let me write it. Let write this one a little bit. Right, um, this here is the negative three on two, and I got the negative three on two because when I reach this step here, I take the three on two and I fling it across. So that's how it became negative three on two in both cases. Right, and this plus or minus came from the square root. So in this case, I use the plus, and in this case, I use the minus three and a half to get my two answers. You understand? Ah, yes. Right? So this is how, remember, when you do a square root, a square root is always two answers, plus or minus. Right? So in this case here, I get two, and in this case here, I get negative five. I want you to remember how these are the actual solutions. These are not the factors that you factorize. Notice when I factorized here, right, two numbers that add up to give me positive three, right? and two numbers that multiply to give me negative 10. Notice how the factors here are positive five and negative two, eh? right? But then when I solve five, positive five is equal to zero, x is equal to negative five. When I solve them, they're gonna end up being this. So just remember, when you do the complete in the square, right, version of this, you are actually getting the actual solutions for x and not just the factors right the actual solutions so we could see here that the turning point is this these are the roots so let's get the y intercept 
the y-intercept is when x is 0, so that will just be negative 10. So the y-intercept is negative 10 when x is 0, right? So now we could make a sketch. And when we make the sketch like this, we could see a lot of stuff um, is in the negative part here, right? So we're making the sketch here now. And I'll just carry this up a little bit further, right? And I'm sorry it's so scrappy, but the sketch gonna look like this. We have two on this side. We have negative five on this side. We know is our minimum. And we could see here that the X value for the turning point is negative three on two, but the turning point, the Y value is all the way down here. So if this is negative three on two, for the x that will be here, that is negative one and a half. And then for the y is negative 12 and a quarter. So that is the turning point there, right? And then the y intercept is negative 10. So that means that is about here, negative 10 is where it cut in the y axis. And so your curve is going to look like this. Right? And I'm sorry for the scrappiness there. Yeah. So what we saw here was, yes, we could have factorized this. But instead of factorizing it, I went straight to the completing the square formula because that is literally give me all the answers that I need. So once I put it in the form of completing the square, right, then I could just easily get the turning point. Minus HK is the turning point. So I just get that directly from here, right? Then I could use this to actually solve for my roots instead of factorizing. And sometimes, I mean, yeah, factorizing might be easier for the roots, but guess what? You already did all the work. And sometimes it can be factorized. Eh? Sometimes it might be hard to factorize. So you could just use the same thing. You notice that I put it equal to zero first, just like what we do when we actually do factorize. You put it equal to zero means that you're putting it equal to the x-axis when y is zero, and you're finding the points where it's cutting the x-axis. That is why we put it equal to zero, right? And we go through the tralala, and this is what we get. Now, I'm sorry for this being so scrappy. I'll try to be a little less scrappy so let me do this next one and negative 2x minus 3x plus 5 right so oh negative 2x squared sorry yeah okay. and we can see that it's a maximum right so let's apply our formulas okay. let's find for each h is equal to b which is negative 3 all over 2 times a which is negative 2 so h is remember these two negatives gonna cancel right so therefore this h will end up being positive 3 over 4 okay? now let's go to k k is 4 times a which is negative 2 times c which is positive 5 minus b which is negative 3 squared all over 4 times a which is negative 2 right so k I'm gonna end up being and i promise i would not go scrap scrap in it we're gonna scrap you anyway right five twos are ten ten times four that is negative forty right and then this is three trees are nine so that is minus nine divided by uh, four twos are negative eight right so um you notice the negative three negative three times negative three is positive nine so when this is squared this becomes positive nine but then you have this negative over here that makes it negative nine right okay? so this will end up being minus 49 over minus eight right okay? and 49 over eight 
is 6 and 1 eighth. So that is positive 6 and 1 eighth. Okay. So now we have H and we have K. So now it's just a simple matter of, of the form in the form A into X plus H squared plus K. So that implies A is negative 2 into X plus h is 3 on 4, positive 3 on 4, squared plus k, which is positive 6 and 1. Okay. So that means, now that we have it in the form, that means that the turning point which is just negative hk is negative h is negative 3 over 4 and then k is 6 and 1 8. Okay. so negative 3 over 4 6 and 1 8 that is our turning point um, now let's find for the roots right and you can see this here you know it'll be a little uh, actually the, the roots might work out to be the same thing honestly um, you know, it is factorizable, but we could just work out the roots from here. If you put this equal to zero, then I could see negative two into x plus three on four squared is equal to negative six and one over eight, right? Therefore, x plus three over four squared is equal to negative 6 and 1 over 8 divided by negative 2. The negatives will cancel. So that means that 6 and 1 over 8 divided by 2 is 3 and 1 over 16. All right. So now I bring the square root across. So therefore, x plus 3 on 4 is equal to the square root of 3 and 1 on 16 and remember a square root has two answers so the square root of 3 and 1 on 16 is 1 and 3 quarters so now we have x plus 3 quarter is equal to plus or minus 1 and 3 quarter right so x plus 3 quarter is plus or minus 1 and 3 quarter. So now I could have my two answers. I throw in over this 3 quarter. So x is equal, when I throw over the 3 quarter, it becomes negative 3 quarter. Right? And I'll use plus 1 and 3 quarter. Or x is a true in over the 3 quarter so it's a negative 3 quarter and i'll use on this side the minus 1 and 3 quarter okay so obviously 1 and 3 quarter minus 3 quarter on this side x is 1 and on this side x is um 3 quarter minus 3 quarter that is 1 just on it 3 over 4 minus one and two and four. All right, two and a half. So this is negative two and a half, okay? So we have the turning point. We have the roots, okay? And now we can find the y-intercept. So the y-intercept When x equals 0 implies y is going to be equal to, we can look at the, the equation right here, we can see that it's plus 5, the value of c, okay? when x is 0. And so, now we can try to sketch, uh, that's crappy. Um, let's see, what do I want? Um, there's a maximum negative here, one, the root is one and negative, so okay, mostly a negative kind of thing. 
So the roots here is 1 and then on this side we have negative 2 and a half. If we look at the turning point, the turning point, the x-axis is negative 3 quarter. Let's put that about there. And negative 3 quarter and about, let's put it about here to be 6 and 1 eight. So this here is the turning point, negative 3 quarter and 6 and 1 eight. Okay. Um, and we could tell it done looking like, a, and then the y intercept is 5, so they're cutting at about here 5, and we could tell that it looking like this. Okay. This is how this graph looks. So uh, let me ask you guys something. How do you guys feel about the sketching of a curve and using the completing the square formula? So we have 2x squared minus, huh? Minus 6x minus 5, is that it? Yes, right. So all I'm going to do is use my formula. H is B over 2A. So B is negative 6. You notice how careful I am being. Over 2 times A, which is 2. That gives me negative 6 over 4, which is what? Negative 3 over 2. Right? So we get H to be a negative here. Right? Um, did you get negative 3 over 2 for that, Shazik? All right, so we don't get so far, which is a k is equal to four times a, which is two, times c, which is negative five, right? Um, minus b, which is negative six squared, all over four into a, which is two. <coughs> So what do we get here? Five twos are 10, and four is negative 40, right? Six sixes are 36, I believe. So negative 40 minus 36. Now, this six, my negative six over here is being squared. So that will turn into positive 36, but then it have this negative sign in front of here, right? So that is how we get negative 36 divided by eight which is where's negative 40 minus 36 is negative 76 over 8 all right which is negative nine and a half you get that no oh where you wrong i was looking at 18 negatives right before the six and i was still getting to positive six and then you square it yeah. No, you had to square that first. Forget about that. Right? That is why I say put this in a bracket. Put this in a bracket and work the brackets first. And whenever you're making a substitution, you notice when I start inserting numbers in the formula, I put each one of them numbers in its own bracket. Eh? Yeah? So I know inside of this bracket is B and that B being squared. Yeah? Yes, sir. Right? So you see how it is, right? And I'll work the brackets first, right? So that B negative 6 is being squared, so that'll give me positive 36. And well, then it have the negative sign out here to deal with, right? So, yeah, so it's, just, it's little algebra stuff is what troubling you there, Shizzy, right? Um, so, nine and a half. Now, listen, this question I doubt you'll ever have to do in CSEC, but all of these formulas you will have to know because they will help you. So, even though you might not, never have to actually do a question like this in CSEC, every single part of this question will help you in a some CSEC question somewhere. So, so, so it, well, we'll take a look at some of the CSEC questions just now, right? Let's finish this first. So therefore, now we have the turning point. Of, no, let's let's see of the form of the form a into x plus h squared plus k 
implies a is 2 into x plus h. Well, h is negative 3 on 2 squared. And then k is negative 9.5. So it'll be minus 9.5. Right? So now it's time to, we could get the turning point one time. The turning point is negative hk. So look at what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this h. This h is negative three on two, and So I'm gonna take this negative three on two and put it where I have h. So that is negative h, which is negative three on two. So you see how I use the brackets there? I took this negative three on two is h. Yeah. So I'll just put that where I had H and I forgot about the negative outside. I'll leave it in. And then K by itself is negative nine and a half. So that means that the turning point, now these two negatives will mess with each other. The turning point is positive three on two and negative nine and a half. That is the turning point. All right? And now let's solve the equation. And of course we could factorize it, but uh, let's just go the easy way or I well I don't know I always like the hard way the easier way so put it equal to zero throw the nine and a half across so it'll be two into x minus three on two squared is equal to nine and a half okay so therefore x minus three on two squared is equal to nine and a half divided by two which is Four and three quarter, nine and one on two divided by two. Yep, four and three quarter. Right, four and three quarter. Right. So now we have this squared is equal to four and three quarter. So therefore, x minus three on two is going to be the square root of four and three quarter which is my decimal so I guess I'll have to use it 2.179 right so therefore that's plus or minus right so x now is equal to this negative 3 on 2 I'm gonna throw it across so it's gonna become positive 3 on 2 plus 2.179 or x is positive 3 on 2 minus 2.179 so that is this plus 3 on 2 this here uh, let's call it 3.6 let's call this 3.7 okay, x or um, 3 over 2 minus 2.179 let's call this x is negative 0 0.68 right around here getting the decimals but sometimes you just have no choice right? so um and we could tell here that this would have probably be a bit hard to factorize eh? um because of that five being a prime number so let's go with this now we have the turning point we could see the y intercept is negative 5. All right. You can see it from the equation there. So therefore, what do we have? The turning point is positive 3 on 2 down here. All right. A is positive here, so there's a minimum. Okay. All right. um, this, this, okay, so I'll, I'll be more on the positive side for this one. So x here is uh, this is negative 0 0.68 and on this side we have positive 3.7 over here we have for the turning point positive 3 over 2 which is about here but then negative 9 and a half all the way down here so that's 3 on 2 and negative 9 and a half okay. and we see that the y-intercept is negative 5, so it makes sense. Negative 5 is around there, 
And so now we can see that the curve is going to look something like that. Nice. So Shizé, how do you feel about it now? You understand the process is just the negatives and the actual algebra. Yeah, the formula is not hard, but I just make it all. If I don't pay attention, I just make it all mistakes while I go around it. Yeah, Scotia famous for that. Right? Scotia for a real famous for that, right? Okay, so let's take a look at this one here. Hopefully the other questions will be a lot quicker to do. Right? The diagram shows the graph of y, and let me just write it a little bigger here of y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 3 for the domain negative 4 x 2. Now that is the word range and domain. I want to pay attention to that, right? Because you know this is like a range, right? Our range is from negative 4 to 2. That is the range. Yeah? But really and truly in maths, and we're going to see this. You don't have to write this down now, but we're going to see this in the next topic that we do. Right? But even though this here is like a range, right? We just call it two different words. When we're talking about x, we're talking about domain. Right? And then when we're talking about y, if I had y in the middle there, that would have been a range. So for range, we just call for y, we just call it range, but for x, we just call it domain. But they really just mean the same thing, really. Right? Is that if x going from negative 4 to 2, and we could see it here, this being 2, and this being negative 4. So therefore, this graph only exists within that domain. Right? Negative 4 to 2. Right? Now, I ain't start doing the question yet. As you can see, I'm just looking at the graph and I'm seeing everything. And let me just see. All right. I can see the turning point there. I can make out the turning point to be negative 1, negative 4. Maybe that might help me. I could make out the roots there, 1 and negative 3. Maybe that might help me. Let's see. Use the graph above to determine the scale used on the x axis. Well, the scale used on the x-axis is 1, 2 centimeters for one unit, right? You see, this is 1 centimeter, 2 centimeters for one unit. So that is interesting. That's an interesting question. 2 centimeters for one unit. Oh, that's what you know. Yes. Yes. So the, that's not confusing. Right. So, so you can see here that for the y-axis, they use 1 centimeter for each unit. But for the x-axis, they use two centimeters for one unit. Yeah, so that is the scale, right? Um, the value of y for which x is equal to negative 1.5. So when x is negative, so this is 1. So this here is negative 1.5. And I'm going to come down here. And this is the value for y. And that value for y is right here, this line here. And if we check that, and I could go straight into it there, we could see that if this is 3, this is 3.2, 3.4, 3.6, 3.8, and 4. So therefore, this little line here will actually be 3.8, right? So the value of y when x is negative 1.5, y will be 3.8 right there. Right? 3.8. So easy stuff you could see. C-sec has come quite easy with these quadratic questions. The values of x for which y is 0. y is equal to 0. That is when we put this equal to 0 and we factorize. So the values of x when y is equal to 0 is the roots. Yeah. So the roots here now we could see are 1 and negative 3. Right? So the roots are x equal 1 and x equal negative 3. Right? The range 
of values of y given your answer in the form that where a and b are real numbers right so it's just what i was talking about there we can see that this is the range of x values spanning from negative 4 to 2 but they just didn't call it range they called it domain so when when we're talking about x we're talking about domain but when we're talking about y values we're talking about range but they are the same thing how how much does it span right we can see here that the highest y value is positive 5 and the very lowest y value is the turning point which is negative 4 so why this entire graph exists between 5 and negative 4 on the y-axis so I'll put negative 4 y 5 and that is it for this one and this one wasn't so hard Scotia what did you think about this one Scotia and Shizzy nice so this here wasn't really um, a quadratics question but it is a bit of a factorizing question right now it have this here that I, this is the reason why I give you this question this guy here anybody could tell me what this is um, this is a difference oh, okay. of two squares anybody could tell me the, uh, the formula for a difference of two squares if you have a squared and you you guys might want to write this down and we did this already back in september last year when we were doing algebra right and if you guys don't remember it write this down this is an important thing that they just bring every single time in a number two you just get a difference of two squares question right if you have a square minus another square and you want to factorize that the answer will be a plus b into a minus b right and if you want proof then i could take a times a to give me a squared right a b times a to give me b a right a times b to give me minus b a and then b times b to give me minus b squared and you can see these two will cancel and i'll get back a squared minus b squared right so this is something that you should know and you should be able to recognize so we'll do that number two first we'll see that 9x squared minus 4 right and they want you to factorize this and there isn't really any way other than a difference of two squares what you have to do is you have to realize well hey four is a square and nine is a square right nine is really three squared then yeah so this is three squared x squared minus four which is two squared yeah so what is this this is really this 3 squared x squared, I could say that that is 3x squared minus 2 squared. You all follow me from here to here? Should say ask push up? Yes, sir. Right? So now I have it in the form of a difference of two squares. Right? So you kind of had to look at it and recognize that, hey, these are square numbers. So because these are square numbers, a difference of two squares, so that means that when I factorize in it now, I will take a plus b, 3x plus 2, and then on this one, I will take 3x minus 2. That is the answer for this question. Right? Chizé and Scotia, did you guys remember this from before? Yes, sir. All right, Caitlin, you remember it? Huh. Well, I mean, I'm glad to know you all just pay attention. So great detail in my class. Soraya, you remember it? No? All right, write, write it down. Um, make sure you write it down because that is a question that will come for every CSEC exam, every single one. Um, and it'll always come around the number two or number three. 
when you're seeing these factorizing things here, right? So let's look at this number one here now. And uh, as I say, these aren't really quadratic questions. These are more just factorizing questions involving indices, right? So this number one here, I have two x cube y plus six x squared y squared, right? And I have to look at what I could pull out, right? Um, I can't pull out x cubed, but I could pull out x squared. So I could pull out x squared on the outside there. I could pull two on the outside there. And I could pull y on the outside. Okay. And then open brackets. 2x squared y. So why why am I talking about this? Well, I'm looking for common terms. They both have x. So that means that x is something I could pull out. They both have y. So y is something I could pull out. And they both have a multiple of two. Two and six is a multiple of two. So that means two is something that I could pull out, right? So if I pull out the two, right? Then two multiplied by something will give me this. And two multiplied by three, something will give me this, right? Six. Um, I can't pull out x cubed, right? Because this one here have x squared, so x cubed multiplied by something wouldn't give me x squared unless I have a fraction and all kind of madness, right? So what I'll do is I'll pull out x squared instead, right? And then I will pull out, this is y to the one, I'll pull out y to the one, right? Open brackets now, 2x squared y multiplied by what? Let me see how good all it is. 2x squared y multiplied by what will give me this? 2x cubed y. Scotia. <laughs> Just x alone, eh? Mm -hmm. Right? x alone. So, so 2x squared y multiplied by x will give me this. Plus, uh, what do you think this one is going to be? 2x squared y multiplied by what will give me this? 3, no, yes, 3, so 2 trees are 6, yeah, I have the x squared already, and then y times y will give me y squared, and this is your answer, you just factorized it, nice, so Scotia, Shazi, Soraya, Caitlin, let me get a yay if you understand, yay, Yay! Yay. <laughs> Caitlin, use something else, yes? Wow. Caitlin was like, yay! Tiniest little yay, right? And this, this last one is pretty much more of the same kind of thing. We have um, 4x squared plus 8xy minus xy minus 2y squared well first of all we could see that this could actually uh, this could actually go to 7 you know 7xy and eh? 8xy minus xy is 7xy right okay? but let's not do that yet okay because what I'm realizing is that this is 4 and this is 8 so maybe I could factorize this and then this have y and y so maybe I could factorize this somehow I don't know and right, let me try it and see right because they had to have a reason why they split up that and they just didn't put 7xy had to have a reason why I'm suspicious about that right? so let's just take these two terms alone and factorize that 4 I could bring 4x outside and inside I'll have x yeah 
Um, four x times x is four x squared plus two y x plus two y. You all agree with this one? Yes. All right. Now, what I recognize here is that this is actually factorizing a quadratic method two. Right? Method two is the one where we had to form groups and all kind of thing. Right? So now I have this side here now. And I see in there that I have x plus 2y. So if I put x plus 2y over here, right? what would I have to multiply by this to get this? What would I have to multiply by x plus 2y to get this? Anybody? Minus y. So minus y times x is minus xy. And minus y times 2y is minus 2y squared. So you see my suspicions turned out correct. That they didn't just give us this as 7xy. They could have do that, but they didn't. They left it as, you know, they left it in a weird way. And the reason being is because it could have been grouped. And remember, this is kind of how we group, we do group factorization, is where we're looking for the same factor on both sides. We split the equation in two, we tackle this one first. Or you could have tackled this one first, no problem, but this one here seemed the easier one to tackle. Right? And then when I got this inside of here, I just move on a hunch, you know. I didn't know. I just say, well, let me just take this and put it here and see if I can multiply anything by it. And yes, so now the answer for this, right? This is factorizing using the group method, method two in the quadratics. And using the group method now, we ended up having four X minus Y. We take this four X minus Y. And then we have here this one, X plus two Y. Yes, so this here was actually um, factorizing a quadratic method too, right? So take a look back at the video if you can remember how to do that one. Yes. Um, anybody have any questions about this? Shizé, how do you feel about this one? Okay. You feel okay about it? Yeah. Right. Would you have? Would you have minus it and get seven xy? To be honest, I'm not really sure. You're not really sure. All right, no problem. Right. So whenever you see something split up like this, you you know you you could start to think about the grouping them on either side, right? And this is here another question just like this from another people, right? And I'll just do and you see they bring the same kind of thing. They bring a difference of two squares here. They bring the group in one over here. And then they bring a flat out factorization of a quadratic over here, right? So let's just do the difference of two squares first, right? Four Y squared minus Z squared. Well, four is really two squared. So that's two squared Y squared minus Z squared, right? So I could say that is 2y squared minus z squared. And now I have the two values here, 2y and z. So that means that as a difference of two squares, that will be 2y plus z into 2y minus z. And once it's a difference of two squares, you could just use this formula over here. I hope you guys have that written down. And this next one is the same kind of grouping one we saw, 2ax minus 2ay minus bx plus by. Um, would you guys like a little two minutes to try to do this one on your own? So, and notice I have 2a and 2a. So I'm gonna pull 2a out into x minus y all right so 2a comes out quite easy and i have x minus y 
So let me put X minus Y on this side. And let me see um, what I have to do. If I multiply it by minus B, then this will become minus BX. And then this will become plus BY. So look at work. So therefore, my factorizing is 2A minus B into X minus Y. Yeah? You all got that? Yes, sir. Very good. I hope I'm not erasing these things too fast. Eh? If I erasing it too fast, let me know. I'll write it back, right? We have this last one here. 3x squared plus 10x minus 8. Now, this here is method 2, right? We could use two ways. We could try to factorize it using method 2, or we could try to factorize it using the quadratic formula, which is my preferred method. Right? But let's just try and see if using method 2, right? Remember when a is not equal to 1, we had to multiply a by c, right? So a times c, a trees are what? 24? What is 8 by 3? Right. So we have negative 24. So we want two numbers that when you multiply them, you'll get negative 24. But when you add them, you will get positive 10. Okay. Any two numbers that, that match that? 12 and negative 2. 12 and negative 2 is 1. And what about 6 and 4? And 6, 4 is that 24? Yeah. Yeah, but that is true. But then you can't have any, like 6 and 4 is 24. But if it's 6, positive 6 and positive 4, I can't get negative 24. And if any one of these negatives, then I wouldn't get positive 10. And? Yes, sir. Right? So I can't say negative 6 plus 4 is 10. Or I can't say 4. So that means that it'll have to be 12 and negative 2 12 and negative 2 because 12 minus 2 is 10 and 12 multiplied by negative 2 is that so next step is i have to so we we see that is 12 and negative 2 are the two numbers so i have to take these two numbers and replace it with the middle number right so what i do there is i take 3x squared plus and I, instead of 10x i'm gonna put 12x minus 2x right so i replace in the 10x with these guys here right and then minus 8 on this side here and look we just ended up with another grouping kind of thing just like the question before Right? So you see 12 and negative 2 is the two numbers we're using. Right? So you see here that for this method 2, um, you have to take the middle number and put plug in the two numbers that you got. And now we could kind of group them. So you guys want to take two minutes and try to group this guy just like how you did this one. 3x out here into x plus 4. Four, four trees are 12, yeah? And if I was to put x plus 4 on this side, what would I need? I would need negative 2 over here. So negative 2 times x would give me negative 2x. Negative 2 times 4 is positive 8. So therefore, now the factors are 3x minus 2 and x plus 4. Everybody cool? Yes, all right anybody um any could i could i move on or you all need a minute to write this down no okay moving on all right so you can see that i put another question this one come from a number nine the factorizing but this here is definitely more of um more of a kind of uh you know, number nine is section two. 
So we're getting far deep into the thing. Let me see how many questions we have again. Ooh, we have quite a number of questions. So let me see if I can, let me just do these things real quick, um, right? So the first one we have here is two P squared minus seven P plus three. And the factorization here factorized completely. That is one mark. I mean, one mark is a little bit brutal for all that root thread. Like, damn, right? So I could say two times three is six. So I want two numbers that when I multiply them, I will get positive six. But when I add them, I will get negative seven. So what do you think those numbers are? Those numbers would have to be negative six and negative one, right? So if it is that I multiply them, I'll get positive six. And if it is that I add them, I will get negative seven, right? So um, I'll take these two numbers now and replace the seven. So now I have two P squared minus six P minus one P plus three, right? So, hmm, I mean, I, I wonder if to flip them instead of negative six minus one, should I put negative one minus six? Because I notice six and three have some things in common. Yeah, I don't know. But instead of instead of flipping, I wouldn't flip them just yet. Let me just see if I could pull two P out of here. Right? And inside here, it'll be P minus three. Two trees are six P. So P minus three. So let's just see if I have P minus three on this side. I'll have to put negative one over here. So negative one times P is negative P. Negative one times three is positive three. So now the answer is two P minus one into P minus three. Yeah or nay? Let me hear from the four earlier. Yeah or nay? Quick. Yeah. 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 All right. I have four years. All right. Factorize this next one two marks. So this might be a little bit uh, uh, more words, right? 5p plus 5q. 5p plus 5q plus p squared minus q squared. Okay. I realize in that p squared minus q squared this is a, a a difference of two squares here right um this this section over here right so i can actually factorize that one time into i have the plus sign here this is p plus q and p minus q right and then on this side here I have to just pull out 5 into P plus Q, right? Okay, you think that could factorize any further? Well, look, I have P plus Q for both of them. So if I pull out the P plus Q, right, P plus Q into 5, plus P minus Q. Right? So P plus Q times five will give me this. And P plus Q times P minus Q will give me this. And I do believe that this should be okay, right? So the reason why you got two marks is because a lot of students probably would not recognize that this is a difference of two squares here and so you could just use your difference of two squares formula right and then factorize this separately on this side then realize that they both have this in common so you could pull that on the outside and have it as five into p minus q note notice my use of double brackets please use your brackets liberally 
you can't you could never run out of brackets use as many as you want let me get yes or nays for this one all right i could tell a little tired so let me go through this real quick right expand this writing your answer in descending powers of x right x plus 3 squared x plus 3 squared into x minus 4 and multiply by x minus 4 right i can't just take this and multiply it by that no because it have this square there the square is governing everything inside here i can't say this is x squared and 3 um and 3 squared no that doesn't work like that it will only work if it's a multiply but not as if it's an add so i actually have to multiply this out x plus 3 times x plus 3 that is x plus 3 squared times x minus 4 so i'll do this x plus x that is x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9 so that gives us x squared plus 6x plus 9 being multiplied by x minus 4 and now I just do the same thing again x squared times x is x cubed okay. x squared times negative 4 is negative 4x squared okay. now I take the 6x 6x times x is positive 6x squared okay. And 6x times negative 4 is negative 24x, right? Let me know if I'm going wrong anyway. And now I take 9. 9 times x gives me positive 9x. And 9 fours are 36, negative 36, right? I hope that I got that right. So now we're left with x cubed. And then 6 minus 4 is 2, so that's plus 2x squared. Okay. And now the x's, I have negative 24 plus 9. Negative 24 plus 9 gives me negative 15, so that is minus 15x minus 36. This is your final answer. Uh, this is um, so you don't see here descending powers of x, so you see here x cubed, x squared, x. See that? Uh, yeah. So I put them in descending order, 3, 2, 1. You understand? Mm -hmm. Right, so because you see when you expand it out, you're going to begin a set of x's all over the place. And instead of having it, usually when you're writing an equation, you just put the highest power first. And you just write an equation in descending powers of x. Yeah? Understand now? Yeah. All right, nice. All right, so it's a real good thing that I give you. I'm glad that I gave you all this paper. All right? Um, nice. So given that f of x is equal to that, write f of x in the form of completing the square. Well, this is something that we know at least, right? So. And remember, I told you guys last class, f of x is just the same as y, so you'll treat it as y. 2x squared plus 4x minus 5 in the form a into x plus b squared plus c. Well, we could see here that even though they're trying to fool us with this b and c thing, this is really just completing the square. This is h and this is k. So let's work out h. h is what? Minus, h is what? b over 2a, remind me again. Yeah? Is it b over 2a or minus b over 2? Right, and k is 4ac minus b squared over 4a, that's correct? Yeah. Right? So now h is b, which is 4, all over 2a, which is 2, which is gives us 1, right? So that h is 1, right? This h, this is really h over here, 
this is where the key over here okay and let's work out key key is 4 a which is 2 c which is negative 5 minus b which is positive 4 squared okay, divided by 4 times 2 so that will give us 5 twos are 10 that's negative 40 okay, and 4 fours are 16 and then we had a minus sign outside here so that's minus 16 all over 4 twos are 8 so that is negative 58 all over 8 right did i do that correct negative 40 minus 16 is negative 56 nobody corrected okay i guess i'll get tired negative 56 all over 8 which is negative 7. so therefore f of x is equal to a which is 2 into x plus h which is 1 squared minus 7 and that is the answer anybody got that okay. let me just write over this here this is of the form so so what did we get f of x is what um 2 into x plus 1 squared minus 7 that is what we got right right now this is just one mark is a one marker state the equation of the axis of symmetry anybody quick minus h yes that is it right so symmetry the axis of symmetry or the line of symmetry is just simply neg x is equal to is it x yeah x is equal to negative h right which means x is equal to negative one in this case here right and then the minimum point which they're asking us for in the next question which is the turning point is equal to negative h k which is h is 1 so negative h is minus 1 and then k is negative 7 minus 1 minus 7 is the turning point Right? and sketch the graph and on the graph show clearly the minimum point and the axis of symmetry so we were doing this all day sketching this graph is easy um ooh, we, we, we need the roots though do we have the roots oh we don't have the roots one mark the minimum point one mark axis of symmetry we have the minimum point axis of symmetry and I mean, they didn't give us no marks for the, oh, sketch the graph of f of x here, and they gave us two marks for that. So I hope in that, that we had to find the roots there. So let's find the roots just for the hell of it, right? Um, 2 into x plus 1 squared minus 7 equals 0 for the roots. Therefore, 2x plus 1 squared is equal to positive 7 x plus 1 squared is 7 on 2 x plus 1 is equal to the square root of 7 on 2 wow that i'll leave that just now eh? the square root of 7 on 2 is a decimal and i hate decimals so i'm going to leave it like that if you hate decimals as much as i do then you could leave it because the answer for this is 1.870828693 dot 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 yeah so there is no way that you could actually write down an accurate answer using decimals that is why i hate decimals right however the square root of seven on two that is pretty much as accurate as you could get yeah, so you can leave it in this val in this form, and this form is called SUD, a SUD form, right? Seven on two. So therefore, x now are bringing over this negative one here, this one, so it'll become negative one. So x will be the negative one plus the square root of seven on two, or 
x will be the negative 1 minus the square root of 7 on 2. Now we just did this, did this for kicks, eh? And at the end of the day, um, they didn't ask us to find the roots anywhere. So I got wondering if they're telling us to sketch the thing without roots. I don't know. Right? So let's just draw it and see what it looks like. Right? Um, just now, minus this, minus 1. This here is 0 0.8. And then um, this here will be negative 2.8, right? Um, so I'm just doing that to have a kind of, uh, uh, of an idea that the roots here, this one going to be 0 0.8, this one here going to be negative 2.8, right? The turning point is a minimum, and we got the turning point to be negative 1, negative 7. This is your turning point here, and they say to show the axis of symmetry. So I will draw this here, like this. They didn't tell me to find no y-intercept. I just find the roots because I wanted to know if you know, if the curve does go on this side or if it does go on this side, how would this go? So I think finding the roots is important for sketching a graph, even if they didn't tell you. So this is what your graph would look like. They didn't tell us nothing about the the uh, the y-intercept, but we could see from the original equation that the y-intercept is going to be negative 5. And this here is your axis of symmetry or the line of symmetry which is the line x is negative 1. So your, your curve should look like this. The substitution rule works when you're doing any kind of simultaneous equation. y is equal to 8 minus x, and the other equation is 2x squared plus xy is equal to negative 16. Right? So solve the pair of simultaneous equations. Five marks. Well, I could see here that I already have equation one and equation two, and I already have y is equal to eight minus x. So I'll just sub equation one in equation two. So wherever I see y, I'm gonna put eight minus x. So that is two x squared plus x times y, which is 8 minus x, is equal to negative 16, right? 2x squared plus 8x minus x squared is equal to negative 16, right? 2x squared minus x squared, well, that is 1x squared. x squared plus 8x is equal to to negative 16 right and so what I'll do is I'll bring the negative 16 over on this side so I will get x squared plus 8x plus 16 is equal to 0 yeah right? and now that I brought the negative 16 over on this side and I end up with 0 here I can actually factorize this now to get two different answers for x right so x here x here what two numbers when i multiply them i'll get 16 when i add them i'll get 8 when i multiply them i will get 16 when i add them i will get 8 i mean i know 8 twos are 16 but what about 4 and 4 4 fours are 16 right so it'll be 4 and 4 plus plus so 4 times 4 is 16 and 4 and 4 is 8 right I'll let me move real slow with that one so therefore since I have the same answer twice means that I could just figure out for one of them x is equal to negative 4 and therefore y is equal to 8 minus x if x is negative 4 y is equal to 8 minus x is negative 4 
that is 12. 8 plus 4 is 12. So therefore, um, these two are only intersecting at one point. Therefore, um, therefore, remember we were talking about how when we solve simultaneous equations, what we're actually doing is finding where they intersect. But we could see here that this is a quadratic, this underneath one, equation two is a quadratic. And then equation one cutting so, so you're supposed to get two different answers if you solve them simultaneously. And when you solve them simultaneously, you reach factorization here. That is when you would get two different answers for x. And then you could have sub it in equation one to get two corresponding values for y, and you will have higher two points. But this is not the case. We see in here we only have one value for x, right? One value for x, and therefore one value for y. So therefore, we have the curve, but this line is only touching the curve at one point. Right? One point here. What do we call this when a line is touching the curve or a circle at one point? What do we call it? Right. So we can see here that because the line is touching this curve at just one point, and what is that point? The point when x is negative 4, y is 12. That is the point there. Right? So we solved the two of them simultaneously and we found that they only touching at one point. So state, giving reason for your answer, whether it is a tangent to the curve. Yes, right, um, intersects at only one point. And that is the point negative 4, 12. Yes, so because of that, it is a tangent to the curve. Make R the subject of the formula. V is equal to pi R squared. You're also supposed to be able to do this with your, with your pi R squared H, with your eyes closed. I can make R squared the subject of the formula true over pi and H. So V is V divided by pi H. And therefore R is equal to the square root of V divided by pi H. Right? I hope you are good with this one. Given that x squared plus ax plus b, ooh, this is a nice one, okay? And I want either Scotia or um, Shazay or even Soraya and uh, 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 Caitlin to, to help me out with this one. Given x squared plus ax plus b is equal to this, work out the values of a and b. How? How would we do that? What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you see when you see the question? Well, what are some of the things that come to your mind first? Shazay. Okay, yes. You can see you see in this here, Shazay? Yes, sir. Does that look familiar? Yeah. Alright. So this is of the form completing the square. Right? So we have this is of the form A where A is 1 into x plus h squared minus k. Right, where we know h is equal to b over 2a, and yeah, so I could actually find right h is what h is 2, so 2 is equal to b. Now, now this is a confusing thing, yeah, because and this is why I hate c sec dread because c sec like to confuse people, right. Because the, the form here is ax squared plus bx plus c. So really and truly, this b here is really this a here. Yeah? And this is why I hate c sec, right? So that is a all over 2 times a, or well, this a is 1. Right? So we can see here that a is going to be equal to this this a here this time is equal to 2 times 2 which is 4 right? so I'm seeing here that this 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 here this this value here 
is full. Right? Um, any ideas how to record this one? Well, I can know. I know that this is k, and k is equal to what? Four a c minus b squared all over four a. Right? Remember, I want to find this, and this is really c, yeah. And this is why I hate c. Second, how it is weird. Right? So I want to find this. So let me do some substitutions and make sure, right? Um, k is negative 3 is equal to 4 times a. a. Remember, this abc here is from the actual general formula, right? So this a is this one over here. This c is actually this b that I want to find. So I'll put b over there. minus b squared well b squared is this and we saw that that is 4 so that is 4 squared all over 4 and we saw that this a is 1 so that is 1 over here right so i really hate c sec for how they worded it by the 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 the, the, the you know the actual letters they could have used p and q you know I mean, oh gosh, man, Other people, some people don't think a little bit red. So anyway, so we can see here that to find C, we just have to make B the subject of the formula. So let's simplify that negative 3 is equal to 4B minus 4, 4 is a 16. Remember this here was in brackets, right? Um, all over 4. Oh, look, this, this could actually kind of cancel here. This 4 could go into this 4. Nah, nah, I wouldn't do that, right? Let me carry this 4 over. So now I'll have um, 4B minus 16 is equal to 4 times 3. 4 trees are 12. So that's negative 12, right? 4B is equal to 16 minus 12, which is 4, I believe. So 4B is equal to 4. Therefore, B is equal to 1. So we found here that the A and the B, this is 4 and this is 1. So I'll just do it real quick again, right? And I was saying how I real hate how CSEC worded this. I find they should have used P and Q instead of A and B. Because really, this here is AX squared plus BX plus C. Yeah? And we could see here that this is of the form completing the square, right, where this is h and this is k. Right? So at the end of the day, I could say that h is equal to b over 2a. Remember, this b and this a comes from the general form. Yeah? So let me just substitute now h being 2 is equal to b. b is here. Which is which is what which is what we want to find. So B is actually A, which is why I hate this how this question was written, right? And then two, the actual A is one over here. So therefore we get A to be four. Right? So if A is four, well remember that means that 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 A is this this middle number here A is actually B in the general form. I really hate how they word this question though. Wow. All they needed to do was use P and Q, you know. Oh gosh, right? So we have A is one. We have this B here, which is four. And we're looking for this C over here. Well, we could use the, the formula for K. K is equal to four AC minus B squared all over um, four A. And we could see here that k is negative 3. So that means that negative 3 is equal to 4. a is 1. c is what we want to find. And they, they have c as b over here. So I'll just put b minus b squared. b squared is this 4 over here. So minus 4 squared all over 4 into a is 1. 
right? This is the this is the A. So the this A C B this A B C here comes from the general equation, and it's not talking about this A and B that they used here. That these dumb people, CSEC have some real dumb ways of, of putting questions, but just to confuse people even more, right? So what this works out to be negative three is equal to four B. Um, minus 16, 4 fourths are 16, and then you'll have the minus there, all over 4, right? So therefore, 4b minus 16 is equal to negative 12, 4b is equal to 16 minus 12, um, which is 4b is equal to 4, therefore b is equal to 1, right? So we can see here that the a that them talking about is 4, and the B that them talking about is one. Six six is a thirty six, right? Yeah. So this is x squared minus six squared. So we have a difference of two squares. So therefore, the answer is x plus six and x minus six, right? And for this one here, whew, all right. Twelve twos are twenty four. So I want negative 24 and the p plus q had to be 5. So which two numbers that when I multiply them I get negative 24 and when I add them I get 5. Yeah, so that'll be 8 and minus 3. Yeah? 8 3 is a 24 and then 8. You all there? You all still there, right? Yes. <laughs> you see, now, now I'll just get paranoid and bummy. <laughs> so eight eight times three is twenty negative twenty four and eight minus three is five. So now I will replace the middle one with these two. So two x squared plus eight x minus three x minus twelve. All right. Um. Okay. So let me see um how this group could work. I could see I could pull out two x here. And I'll have x plus 4 on the inside, right? Um, 2x, no, yeah, 2x times 4, 4 to the 8x, right? So therefore, I'll want x plus 4 on this side as well. So I'll probably have to put minus 3 there. Minus 3 gives me 3x. And then minus 3 plus 4 is, yeah, negative 12. 4 to the 12. So therefore, this one is 2x minus 3 into x plus 4. Nice. Um, so I could see that, uh, and surprisingly enough, um, CSEC like to bring that method too, boy. The method 2 of factorizing. Um, yeah, the, uh, it was more than I thought. I, I, I just pull out some questions at random here. And, right, last one, and this one is actually not a quadratics question, but you'll see why. The graph of the function y is equal to x squared for this domain negative 4 and 4. So we can see here the graph is from negative 4 to 4. So it exists in between there. And the curve, right? This curve is the graph of y is equal to x squared. And I don't know what this line is. I didn't read nothing about that line, but I see in there that the line is intersecting at two points, right? And they have some missing areas there. The coordinates of the points m and n are 1y and x9 respectively. Determine the value of x and y. Hmm. How do you think I could do that? Determine the value of x and y. What the ground? Yeah. How much marks it is is one mark each right so yeah i could look at the graph and i could see that um this x is three and yeah and then where's this where's this y now one well we could guess is one right but guess what and we know it have a way we could be sure this curve is the curve y is equal to x squared, right? So when y is 9, right, x squared, x will be the square root of 9, which is 3, right? So x is 3. We could work it out instead of just reading it from the graph, right? And then 
when x here is negative 1, y is equal to negative 1, x is negative 1 squared, so therefore y will just be 1. So yeah, we could have try to average and hope that is 1, but you know, I mean, they give us the equation and we have enough information to actually figure it out. So x is 3 and y is positive 1, right? So you see, we are really doing nothing much quadratically yet. My throat real hurting because I talk in non-stop since 4 o'clock. <coughs> Determine the gradient of the line MN. So now we want the gradient of the line. So where's this point? 3, 9. And this point is negative 1, 1. So the gradient now... And right, let's call the gradient small m. That is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. The gradient of the line mn. So the gradient of a line is this. So that is y2. Let's call these the twos and these are the ones over here. So y2, which is 9 minus y1, which is 1, all over x2, which is 3 minus x1 which is negative 1 all right so that gives me 9 minus 1 is 8 all over 4 the gradient is 2 all right so the gradient of the line is 2 and now we want the equation of the line and that equation of this line i don't even need to work it out y is equal to mx plus c where m is the gradient and c is the intercept on the y-axis we could see here y is equal to 2x plus now we could use one of the points to work out c just plug the point in x and y and we could find what c is but guess what they're actually showing us c on the graph here remember c is the y-intercept so we could see that C is 3, yeah? So that is the equation of that line. The equation of the parallel line to MN passing through the origin, right? So it has some line that is parallel to MN, right? And I didn't do that well at all. parallel to MN and it passing through the origin right so let me ask earlier a simple question this is the last question that the night are asking earlier if it passing through the origin right then where does this red line cut the y-axis at zero so you would expect that the equation of this line C would be zero and eh? yeah so it wouldn't have a C if it cut in at, 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 at zero, right? So C would be zero, right? The equation of the line parallel to MN. Shazay, what do you know about parallel lines in coordinate geometry? What's the one thing that you know about parallel lines? Have the same gradient. Remember this, Shazay? Yes, sir. Yes, all of these things you have to know should be on your cheat sheet. Parallel lines have the same gradient. Perpendicular lines, right? Perpendicular lines, the product of the gradient equals negative one, right? These are the two. This is the only thing we know about perpendicular lines. This is the only thing we know about parallel lines when it comes to coordinate geometry yeah you guys need to start to write out your cheat sheets there eh? because if you write out your cheat sheets this stuff will be a lot easier for you to remember right so we could see here that the equation of the line parallel to mn so parallel means it's going to have the same gradient so m going to be 2 and it passing through the origin, so C going to be zero. 
So therefore the equation of the line y is equal to mx plus c, y is equal to 2x and c is 0. So therefore the equation of the line, remember the line mn, we got it to be 2x plus 3. So the equation of the line parallel to mn, passing through the origin, is y is equal to 2x. Carefully draw the tangent line on the graph at the point 2, 4. So 2, 4, I'll erase this. And at the point 2, 4, that is this point here, they want a tangent line. And they say carefully draw it. I don't have a ruler and this thing real shaky. Right, so I'm gonna carefully draw it there. And they're gonna say estimate the gradient, estimate not work out there eh? estimate the gradient to the curve at 2 4 the gradient to the curve at 2 4 right well we could see here that the gradient we could do the vertical rise over the horizontal shift the horizontal shift from 1 to 2 that is 1 and then the vertical rise well this is the point 2 4 so the vertical rise is 4, yeah? So the vertical rise is 4, the horizontal shift is 1 from 1 to 2 there. So I could see that the gradient is the vertical rise over the horizontal shift, which is 4 all over 1, which is 4. And it makes sense that this gradient is 4 because this red line definitely looks steeper than this blue line. And we know the gradient of the blue line is 2. So if this red line looks steeper, then this red line should have a greater gradient, which is 4.